Being able to fold forward and touch your toes is one of the telltale signs of a person's flexibility and the benefits of being able to do so include reduced likelihood of back pain, increased strength throughout the posterior chain and the ability to bring that strength to bear in various exercises throughout a wider range of motion. If you haven't watched my video on why you can't touch your toes yet, I'd recommend that you do that first as the tips in there still have great application to what we're gonna be going through today, especially if you're a beginner new to flexibility and if you're new to working on your pike fold. But if your stretching has perhaps plateaued and you don't feel like you're progressing in the way that you should, what we go through today should help you supercharge your hamstring stretching. So without further ado, let's get into it. How are you doing Cali Crowd? Welcome back to the channel that makes calisthenics simple. Jumping straight into it, when it comes to our hamstring flexibility or lack thereof to fold forward, our hamstrings are usually scrutinized as the culprit given that they are the largest muscles involved with resisting flexion at the hip. However, our calves can also limit this range too. You can particularly tell if this is you if when you try to pike you feel pain in your knees, but we can remedy this by tailoring our mobility work to target stubborn calves. By elevating the balls of the feet and medially rotating the lower leg, we place far more focus on the calves. Now, when we go into our pike, you may find that this limits your pike mobility a lot more. You won't be able to get as low down as you usually could. But because we are now stretching the more troublesome calf muscles, this will be far more effective over the long term. We also know that loaded stretching adds significant intensity to our flexibility work too. So we compare the stretch we just did with weights. But keep it light guys and only go as low as you feel you're able to maintain good pike form. So hips in anterior tilt, legs locked straight and no excessive rounding of the back. The next tip is actually the one that moved the needle the most when it came to breaking through my plateaus in terms of pike mobility. And it's in essence a different way of adding significant intensity to our pike training. As I mentioned, progressed intensity is what we want when it comes to flexibility training, particularly when it comes to a large muscle like the hamstrings. The thing is, added intensity when it comes to the wrong cues can lead to us just wasting our time. With the pike, what we often see is a slight tilt in the hips, then this excessive arch in the spine. And when stretching in this way gets nowhere, we feel adding weight will take us deeper into the stretch. Now I'll pause here and say that when done deliberately, this can be extremely beneficial. For example, in an exercise like the Jefferson Curl, where we're looking to articulate the spine by rounding the back segment by segment. But when we're looking to shift our hips into a position that allows for greater hamstring mobility, adding weight or pulling on our feet before we're ready will only encourage the hips away from flexion. Instead, what we should be doing is getting into the deepest pike that we can and push against an immovable object. Pushing away encourages spine extension. When the spine extend, this subsequently has a knock-on encouragement to hip flexion, which allows us to get into a deeper pike fold. This simple change in cue makes it far more likely to get the additional range from where we want it, in the hips and hamstrings, rather than in the lower back, which could lead to serious injury. And what's so great about this is that it pairs so well with our more traditional proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation stretching, aka contract relax stretching that we do so often when it comes to the pike fold and that only makes this cue even more effective. So an illustration of this is if we get into our deepest pike and contract the quads as hard as we can for a few seconds while pushing away with the hands, what this does is we relax the hamstrings through reciprocal inhibition, which simply means the opposite muscle, in this case the quads, are being asked to work and so get excited, which automatically tells the nervous system to relax the hamstrings, making them easier to lengthen. And we can do this at every level of our flexibility as well. So if you can't get into as deep of a pike fold as what we've just illustrated, we can still get into a pike fold that allows for that anterior tilt at the hips and push against something that's slightly more higher up. We still encourage extension at the spine and flexion at the hips and still should be getting that stretch at the back of the hamstrings that will make this applicable to all levels. Crowd, try out these tips to get more out of your hamstring flexibility training. But if you're looking to understand how you can include stretching into your strength training as well, then check out this video.